All right, so I'm gonna do this video on TRX, which is basically a sequencer that, uh, step sequencer that's in here. I use it for certain things, but I think it has a really good purpose. If you're not a step sequencer type person, you probably wouldn't like this, but there's some good in this that you can do. Um, and one of the things is uh, being able to um, do the microscope, which is basically where you can go into and adjust the pitch, the velocity, and even um, which uh, notes, where they play and how they play and et cetera, et cetera. Um, let's do, let's make a simple one beat. So we're gonna use, um, we'll use, let's use 90, around, around 90. We'll do 92, and I'm not gonna do four bars. I'm just gonna do two bars, keep it as simple as possible. All right, pick a pad to record to. It's waiting, but we wanna go to TRX mode. By the way, if you hit shift here, it'll tell you what your time signature is, which is 4-4. Ain't nobody hardly changing that unless you're doing something else. Uh, hold on, let me get into pattern sequence. I'm in the wrong thing. All right, there we go. That's where I should be. 90, what did I say? 92 is fine. We're gonna do two bars. We are the TRX. To get out of TRX, to go into it is here. Okay, and then we'll just hit record and now you're in it. It's gonna start going. <clears throat> you can adjust the velocity pretty easy right here. Um, You hit sub and then pick, you know, what you're gonna do. So I have the drums on F. So we're actually, but we're on A. I don't know why that's on there. Let me exit out. Let's do our pattern sequencing. Where's my drums? Oh, get out of pattern sequencing. All right, they're on F, yeah. So we're gonna go to pattern F so that we're on the same pattern. That's just how I do it. Um, everybody's different on what they wanna do, oops what they want to do, pick a pattern. Let's adjust this to 92, I said. All right, TRX, two bars. Make sure you stay in there. And then go ahead and hit record. It'll start sequence through. All right, so now when you hit shift, here's the kicks and etc. So we're gonna pick this. Um, I'm gonna do my snare first. I like to use shift and then start the snare like not right on time, but like, I usually go like negative seven. And you'll see it swings it up here. Oops, not that one. Which snare is usually on five and 13, but that throws them off a little bit, just a little bit. And sometimes you could do like one snare on perfectly on 13. And then repeat that again, put that on 13. And then adjust the swing again. All right, while we're in here doing this, I'll show you on the next part. Let's pick a hat to do work with. This is what they call tap recording. You can tap this and record, right? So watch as I tap. See? But these notes are kind of off. Also, oops. Got the swing or the start on here wrong. So I'm gonna put that back at zero. That's the one thing you gotta do constantly is go back in and adjust the start point. All right, let's get rid of that. Just drive me crazy. Boom. Oop. All right, so you have that as an option. That's tap recording. That's pretty simple. I just wanted to show you that. Now I'm gonna show you how I would do this. First of all, I'd turn the velocity down on these, personally. And then I might put in these at 30. All right. 
And then I might adjust the, the other ones around 50, something like that. But that can even get bored. So here's where I would use the micro uh, recording feature. I think if you hold pattern, if you um, select there and hit the, hit the pattern you're on, you can adjust the steps, like where the step's gonna, I think it's, this is the pitch. So you can touch each one and really, and really fine tune it a little bit. Not that loud. That might be a little bit much. You can adjust the velocity individually, pretty much like this. To me, this is actually good right here. This is my favorite part. Just going in and adjusting velocities and because you can hold it down now you can't change the page you got to go over to the next page and do it again and touch one so for some people this might not be quick but for me if it's a lot quicker than doing the very way they had it And if you really don't want to do this, then probably better to play it in. So on that first page, I would probably, well, first of all, you got to exit and then you got to go back to, back in TRX like that. Oh, that's another thing. Shift record takes you back. If you exit and then hit shift record, it'll take you right back into it. Oops. So what I didn't like here was, I want to put this back at zero. I, I didn't care for the way that sound. I was just messing with the pitch to show it to you. So just put it back at zero. If I'm going to do different pitches on this stuff, I would pro. oh, 50, no way. Way too high. Exit out of that. I don't know what that is going on there, so I'm gonna hit that one. Oh, let's see how there's an extra step in here. That's in here, so if you make a mistake, you could technically go down to this one. Maybe you could delete that one, because that would be nice. I'm going to just delete it now. Just put it in there. Then there's a shuffle. And I'm not sure on the shuffle, like, how that works. Because I, I don't do this often. And the step item supposedly... Um, if there's more than one note, right, in a single step, then you'll see it there, right, if it's more than one. And otherwise, you can't do any, it's no changes if there's no no other notes there. Um, so you're just in the pitch and the velocity, and then the value knob, you turn it and slightly throw the step off. So it's like a It's, it's basically nudging a note is what it's doing to get you more swing. So I think it might be good on certain hats, but you don't want to do it on everything. It'll get kind of too much. So let's say here, you might want to nudge these a little bit. Then maybe go back into this one. And it looks like you can press it 
and then just be in it. So you actually don't have to hold it. Because I was thinking you had to hold it. But it looks like you don't. But you do have to exit to go into the another sound. And then once you get in that sound, and you can probably let it go, it looks like. And then I guess this changes the step. I don't really fully understand this. Oh, okay, yeah, so it's definitely nudging it. I don't know how far it goes. So you're gonna have to use your ears. I definitely would change that velocity. Don't need to hit that high. This is nice though that you don't have to hold it. So here's one at zero. I'm gonna start turning it up. So based on where you put it, you could also pitch this. Let's see what it sounds like. Ooh, not good. Maybe not that much. Maybe just like one. One. That's not bad. Just so that your notes will be a little different. Hit pattern edit. Hit that one. And maybe adjust the volume. Yeah, just a little bit. Just really, really be conscious not to do it too crazy. Maybe leave that one alone. Move. So it gives you, it makes it, you could actually sit and work with just like a one bar and make your, and then copy the one bar, I guess, over maybe. That would be, a, and just duplicate the one bar and then go back and then adjust a little bit more on your notes, depending on what you want to do. Not bad. So velocity, pitch, item it has to do with apparently the, the nudging of uh, notes. But also, it'll have, like, if you have more than one note there, so if you do, like, a roll or whatever, or some type of uh, ratchet, like, hat. Okay, let's add some kicks. So I usually do that. And then I'll throw one there. Let's throw one there. Throw one there. A weird velocity at 15. So this is a good one to try. Let's try it. Let's put it down a little bit. Let's let's lock this one at 25. So now we're gonna edit this one. We're gonna move it. We don't have to hold it, I keep forgetting. Let's crank it up a little bit. So you can make it kind of swing a little more. It's pretty good. You can pitch that down a little bit if you want a little bit different sound. Touch this one. I'd probably want this to be. That's kind of cool, but I'm going to go back down a little. I wish you could just go through the page a little bit better with that without having to do the turn it off. I'm going to turn this one up a little bit. 
I'm going to put one here. So you can set, oh, so you can add. Oh, uh, can you add a step there? Hmm. No. I guess you can't add a step like that. You have to come out to add the step. I'm going to add that step. This step sequencing is actually getting better just thinking about the way the pattern, the way they got it. I'm going to leave it at 15 or 10. You could always come down a little bit there. And then I'm going to, the item one you have to, let's see what it does. That's not bad. Let's try a little bit higher. A little, it's like it stutters or something. Like, doom, doom. I like that. I'll leave it. All right, cool. So you, again, you have to. Looks like maybe you don't have to come out. Let's let's do this. Let's click there. See if it takes me. That would be a negative. You do have to come out. Okay, never mind. Now you can see these. I wouldn't want to change too much on the on this. It would be more for like the ghost stuff. If I did anything, I might increase that one and make it just louder. Let's see where this one's at. Yeah, a little bit louder. I like that. So that's pretty much what it is. I showed you tap recording, which is where you tap the record, literally, to play and play some in. This is the micro um, micro adjustments or micro. I almost called it a microcosm. Lord have mercy. It's called the microscope. I'm gonna. It's pretty simple. I don't know. I keep probably where you'll notice the biggest thing is when you see three notes. So I'll show you real quick what that looks like. So you. So watch. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna take the sub step and do like like four notes on this one. Something like that, okay? Then you could come in and touch that and you can see there's, they, they just put them perfect, right? So you could maybe adjust that one. Maybe you want that. But you don't want them all to be the same, the same number too. So maybe, you, maybe you want. I don't know. Bring it like that. Or you might want different pitches. Now I'm getting wild. I don't know. I don't know if I would sit and never do that, but <laughs> but you have it there to do it. Yeah, that ain't that would never happen with me because I'm not personally interested in doing all that. All right. So you kind of got a little school on TR rec mode for a simplicity of what how to do it. If you're not a drummer and you struggle with the SP, that can be a start. You don't have to use all those features in there. Maybe you just want to plug in the snares, but you could play your kicks. Or maybe you plug in your kicks on the one, but you do the ghost kicks after live. Um, there's just different ways to work within it. It's not bad. It's not great. It just depends on the person and what they like and want to try. Um, but I wanted to do it myself one time just to document it. So if I ever want to look back at it and decide I want to try to use it, the microscope and the tap recording are cool little options that you could do to lay. And it's just the fact that you can go in and lay down using that tap recording is kind of cool because maybe you do want to put some parts in where you play it in 
And then the other parts you could do, you could kind of do it all together with TRX mode. All right. Also, editing is good too. So let's say you do drum in without using that, but you want to go back in the TRX and just fine tune a couple little kicks that could be maybe off a little or could be nudged a little bit this way to give it a little more swing or whatever you want to do. At least you know that the option is there and available for you. All right. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about on this one was something that kind of is good and irked my nerves at the same time, I guess you'd say, and that is the, the multi-pad out. Um, so yesterday I tried it and I found that it was not... It was not as good as I was expecting. And part of that was, so the first time I tried it, what I did was I went, um, let me just show you. That was, we're on F. I went export, right? Multi-pad. You only got one here on F, so I picked this one. And then I hit that button. So it goes out and you can see it's doing the four, which is the four uh, pads that I actually use. That part's cool. So far, so good. It takes a little while, but no, not a big deal because you feel like you're getting your stems and you supposedly are. But what bothered me was I couldn't figure out where in the world the things were. I was like, where did they store them at? And so I still don't know. I, I figured it out now, but at the time I still was like, what on earth is this? So basically they are in the export file. So check this out though. You go here, right? And then you go down to, maybe you want to import because you can't export, export, right? And you can't look at it on here. So you would have to go, all right, to the samples here and then the export, there they are. This was uh, another project on H. I'm going to delete this though. I think I can delete it. Or I can't. I have to put... You see how it says H1? So that means it's on that... Pro, it's project one, and it's on H, the bank for H, okay? So here's F right here. This is cool. You can still import them back in if you want to. So it's not bad, right? Where's the... Wait, let me make sure. Four. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, so I only did three... There's four, shout out four, right? It said one of four, two of four, three of four, four of four. But I only see, okay, there's one, two. There's only three though, right? That's what I didn't get. Yesterday it was like, I had eight. And I was like, where's the eight at? And it wasn't eight. There was like less than eight. So where's the fourth one at? All right, so I'm gonna go back out. I know for a fact I used two kicks. And I used this hi-hat and that. Two kicks, that, that equals four. That makes sense. But when you look in there, you didn't see but three. It said kicks. So I don't know if it's because they're putting kick. Hold on. They're putting, um, that's kick 10. This kick 10. They're the same kick, Right? But the problem is one's on a different pad. So it seems to me that it would have just put it on a different pad. So I'm going to go back to export, back to sample, back to export, because that's it goes in the export folder. Okay. Now I'm going to listen to this kick. That's it, I guess. So <laughs> I don't know what that is. All right, so I'm gonna go into this. Now I'm gonna switch the camera so you can see the computer, right? Because you need to see the computer to get this. So bear with me as I um, figure out the method to this madness. All right, there we go. Now I'm gonna move, the camera's gonna move a little bit for a second here. So I don't have to uh, take the camera apart or remove the camera to show you this. I'm going to put it just like that. And then we'll zoom in. So you can see the computer. 
All right, so hopefully you can see that. So I'm gonna zoom in a little more for you. There you go. All right, cool. So these are the pads that are on there, right? These are the kicks, snare, hats, etc. When you're in this, this is the, the plug-in. You can look and see if you touch each one, you can see what's there. They also have, this is samples. See this tab, samples? This tab is for your patterns. So that pattern is not on H, is not on E, it's on F. So here it is, it's only one, okay? You're supposed to drag it up here, which I'm gonna do, and it says multi-mode. So then I'm gonna say, okay, it's gonna take a second. Do you know, it says right here, one of four. Let's see how many they give me. It's working on two of four. Three or four. It's telling you it's a snare. They told you two kicks so far. And four or four is a hat. So let's see how many samples end up in this box. Okay, I see four now. Let's see what it looks like though, because we're going to have to put it together. All right, so we're going to do it by using Ableton. So I'm going to open up Ableton Live. 12 Sweet. And we're gonna drag them over so you can see it. All right, so let's do the kicks first. And I'm gonna put them down here. I really don't care that they line up right now. I'm just trying to get them over here so we can make sure we have kicks. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in. We just did the four. I'm gonna min well, I was gonna minimize that. Look at this. This is what it did to me yesterday. Because it's the same kick, unless you rename that kick, you're gonna get the same exact file. All I did was take that file and throw it here. It left out the initial kick on the one, the other kick. It, it's like it doesn't recognize that that's two different samples. They're the same sample rather, but there's two um, parts to that sample. So in other words, if I go back in, so I don't know if it's doing that only when it's the same name or if it's doing it, and the only way I can test is to go back in and re-record it. I'm not gonna sit here and do all that work that we just did. I'm gonna name one of these files something different. I can do that. Oh, and that leads me to the next step which I'm gonna do on the screen and I'm gonna tell you why, because this mess, this renaming stuff is a pain in the butt. Let me tell you, like seriously, let me tell you. All right, up here, it's no problem when you go in here, okay, to do it. So if I go in here, I click that box. It says kick 10, I'm gonna say 10, I'm gonna call this one 10 B. Okay, and I'm gonna say okay. And I'm going to call this one 10A. This will make sense in a second here. If you don't name, so so I'm hoping that by naming these, it'll work. Okay, that's what we're going to hope for. Hope for the best, but expect to work, but expect it not to work. Okay, that's how I feel about it. Um, okay, so we have the pattern. We're going to go back to pattern. It, this only holds it temporarily. Oh, and by the way, if you hit open folder, you can find where it's located. On your desktop, it should be located in your hard drive. There's a SP404 Mark II folder there when you have this uh, app, at least, and it's located there. And don't be fooled by the A that's above. It's always here. The tempos are right next to it, but yeah, it's always that one. So drop it in, multi-pad out, hit OK. We're going through the process again. We're going to hope for the best. If it does this again, then I've learned my lesson that this thing cannot take two kicks for whatever reason. Because I think the other day I had two parts of something and it was doing the same thing. And I kept saying, why is it doing this? So I don't know if it's naming, if it's the issue with naming something that causes it to do that. But okay, so let's see what it did. I'm gonna do all I need, all I care about is the kicks, to be honest. So what I'm gonna do is 
I'm going to delete these two because that's all that matters. And I can't get this. Okay, let's just do this. All right, and we're going to bring in these two. Let's bring in A. That's the same kick. Let's bring in B. Let's hope for it. It worked. Okay, so lesson learned. You have to rename. If you got the same kick, you better make sure one says A and B or you better change something in one of them. If there's two samples with the same name on it, it will assume it's the same sample. I don't know how it assumes it's the same sample if they're played on different parts of the track, but it does. And I have no control over that, but I'm just letting you know, I, you can learn from my mistakes and my failures too. There's A and B. Okay, so now if I click there and I go Command L, which I'm just looping it out, then I can just hit, well, you can't hear it until I do this. And that is way off on the tempo. One second while I fix this. Now I forgot what the tempo was. <laughs> what did I do? What did I say? 92? 90. That's 93. Sorry, I'm looking past the camera here. Since I decided to turn the camera and put it right in my face. 92. All right, that should be it. It might be 94, because I'm looking down now and I see 94 for some reason. That's good. Now I'm happy that it worked this time around and we got to see. We did that together, because I didn't practice that before doing this. If it's a little blurry right now, I apologize. It's just filming the screen is just like that. It, it's not going to be the best quality, unfortunately. I'm just using my iPhone 15 Pro Max and it is what it is. Um, but that's the end of this video. I wanted to show you guys that tap recording. I wanted to show you what the micro uh, cosm would. Microcosm. Microscope. Obviously, I want a microcosm and I have never got one and got the opportunity to use it. Uh, so I need to get one. <laughs> if somebody will send me one because I can't afford that right now. But anyway, um, yeah, so there you go. Now you can see what it does. So those are, I think the tap recording is really cool. I think the microscope, get it right, um, is actually pretty nice for step recording. They could probably enhance it a little more even by giving you a little bit more details and adjustments. But no complaints so far. And I do think they need to figure out this ridiculous, you know, name situation. That's the other thing I told you guys I wanted to say was the, um, if you're going to name your parts, I would highly suggest name your parts in here. Name your samples, name everything inside of this. And the reason why I say that is because <laughs> when you go into the SP and try to name it, it's a lot of clicking and you're going to get tired of it quick. And you don't really get the name you always want because nobody's going to sit. I think it's like, what, 25 characters you can do, if I'm not mistaken. Nobody's going to want to sit there and do that without a type typewriter. Typewriter, Lord, I'm taking it back. Without a keyboard to type it on. Um, so, yeah, that's that's something that I think they could work on a little bit better. But the app is good for getting your files I think I will always do my multi-export here, personally, because I like to be able to just drag it right to the DAW like this, and I don't like removing my SD card just to do this. Like, think about it. If you had to remove the SD card, stick it in there, then do the... Now, the other thing is, if you need those files, just make yourself a folder and just drag them to that folder. And then you could just put them in there and you don't have to worry. Like, I think on mine, did I do one for it? I had one on here, but yesterday I got frustrated because it was messing up so much. On uh, and anyway, now I know it was because of the labeling that it gets confused. Um, but anyway, that's it for this video. I'm really gonna let y'all go. It's like 35 minutes. All right, until the next one. I'm out.